not sure how many of you may have seen the video which we have been showing with the, the difference between pattern messages and pattern messages. But um, just so you know, my process that I'm going through, so that you are welcome to, in your own way, be comparable during this session. Um, I'm going to get my root chakra even wider than we did. And stronger because you know um, it doesn't matter if you send your root chakra all the way to the core of the earth and back that's like a lovely pole or line of energy you tethered but when you open up your crown super wide you all for me the way i work is i always want my root chakra to be wider and deeper than my crown chakra is taller and higher so that i always have a broad base of support i don't or in any way. Um, and I spend a lot of time working my inner energy center so I have a strong grid and network that allows my crown chakra to go up higher and higher and higher while I maintain my awareness. Like, you know, sometimes you're meditating, you go so high, you're like, oh, where'd I go? Um, the more you really work your energy center, the more you can get your awareness higher and higher and higher before you drift away. The reason that's relevant for channeling is we want to bring in like super high frequency beings. We don't want me dropping off on my way to them. You know, I'm like the taxi driver and then I like fall asleep halfway to the destination. That's not good. Um, but it also allows me to create a very strong structural network, a, a, a structure to support their energy in so they can stay in my body or longer. You know, there are some people who say you cannot channel more than 10 minutes. I'm like, that's, you know, or 20 minutes. They're like, once you've channeled, you cannot channel one being for more than 20 minutes. You'll hear that rule all over. And I'm like, who made this up? Like, okay, you can't do it, but I can because I work my energy center. So uh, we've been working this. We'll see how long we can hold them in space. Um, but if they talk too long and you guys get bored, you're welcome to say, okay, time to go now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you never know. You never know. You're like, oh my God. Now they're just telling anecdotes from their childhood. <laughs> really? Okay. So. So I'm uh, going to take a moment where it just looks like I'm taking a nap, uh, but I'm just like getting grounded and opening up and inviting them in. So my crown chakra will be super, super high, and they're going to come flowing in, and they're going to come into my brain. They're already there a little bit. And then I will have my moment of panic that I seem to have every time, I don't know why, of what if I open my mouth and nothing comes out, you know? Or what if they only come in part way and they get stuck, you know? <laughs> so um, the first few minutes of channeling, and I mentioned this just for you all to know, like if you decide to channel, don't get stuck. The first words are, the first word is the hardest. So don't get stuck. Like I want all of you are invited to practice channeling and you know on your own because anyone can do it. Every person on the planet can do it. So I when I first start talking, it's always like you know welcoming, greeting, and you can you can feel like well it sounds like it's still a little beneath that the energies are merging and then they sort of sometimes I become like uh, literally the the two and they're inside of me. Sometimes I'm pushed to the side and I'm hanging out here. Like, you know, when you receive messages, a lot of times they're, it's coming from your right side. Well, I become the one who gets shoved out to the right side and they take over. Or sometimes, like when the way I was going to do a therapy surgery, I get pushed out through my back. And it's almost like I'm piggyback on my body 
while, or I'm a backpack on while they're in my body. Um, when I channel a collective, like when I channel the librarians, I become one of the collective, which is very cool. It depends on the moment. You, the more you open up to receive, the more you can receive. So sometimes a part of me will be closed off, so it has to come a different way, or sometimes the frequency they're sending through comes in one way or another. So honor whatever you get. Uh, sometimes, for me, I'm like, it's the Helen Keller experience. I'm not seeing or feeling or hearing anything. I'm like in a black space while they're pouring through. But then when I come back to it, I will remember every moment with full senses as though I was sitting with them and they were showing me the movie and I was, you know, like, and we're here, like, as though I had been there with them. So honor however it comes to it. It's different for me every time. Okay. This is my first time channeling them. My first time channeling Mother Mary. Um, I did ask them when they're not speaking as a trio to try to say who they are so you'll know. But feel welcome anytime in the process. If you feel a shift in frequency, say, who's speaking now? Because they get so excited. They see each other. They know who they are. So they don't stop to think about the fact that you just seen them. Good afternoon, our divine children. We are not surprised that this room is filled with the most beautiful souls. And of course, all women. Men do not need to be afraid. They will learn soon enough. The rise of the divine feminine does not mean we are the warriors now and we will smite them. Although many of them in their hearts, this is what they think, that they must oppress the woman or the woman will destroy them. And certainly we have enough cause to do this, but that is not the point. This is why, please do not tell our brethren that we say this, this is why the women are the best. <laughs> because we know to conquer through love. We know that the yin and the yang to be equals is truly the best situation. That vengeance is just well, it's silly pettiness. That the true victory is when all benefit. When all can stand forward and say, yes, I am my best without fear, without concern, and I love everyone. This is the rise of the divine feminine. And we are so happy that this time is finally here. It used to be here. But these silly men. So we, we wish to talk here for a moment. You asked. What is divine feminine? What is divine masculine? And we tell you 
you have genders on this planet, but when you are not in this planet, you have no genders. Yet we have the divine feminine and the divine masculine. We call it a different name, which is a, not even in language you would understand because it's not words. Uh, we have no ears, you see, so we don't communicate with words the way you do. Although we love the words when we're here, right? It's so much fun. The puns are delightful. <laughs> and we will tell you a secret. Mother Mary loves a good rumor. <laughs> so, what is divine masculine, divine feminine when there is no gender? Think about this. What is Gaia? Gaia is the, the goddess of all that is physical. Your entire universe. Everything, all the galaxies, the quasars, the sparks, the everything that is physical, that is Gaia. What is source, God? All that is etheric, ephemeral. The fairies, the angels, that's God. If it is physical, it is mine. If it is non-physical, he can have it. <laughs> But who gave birth to everything? Who was the original one who created all this life? First, it was your God, Source. Hence the name Source, the source of all life. Who created physical reality? That is me. Because I wanted to play. I, I, wanted, I wanted to have an experiment. What would happen if we were not all stuck in a therapy? You know, it's, it's nice, but imagine a few gazillion years of just resonating in one frequency. You would get bored, wouldn't you? Come on, you would get bored. <laughs> of course you would. I got bored and I'm a goddess. <laughs> we all got bored. So I propose, why do we not expand life? Why do we not bring in more frequencies, more resonances? And those you call the angels, uh, your ascended masters, your librarians, many were in on this project with me as we created physical reality together. It was a very exciting time. You know, we tried several times before this universe. This is not the first universe. There have been two before this one, and then a few that just didn't quite take off. So, you know, we've been at this for a long time, this uh, three and a half billion years, that's nothing. And we have it in other frequencies, other timelines as well. It's quite the madcap laboratory we have going on. But in this life, women give birth. Yet in real life, men give birth. Do you understand what I mean? Source, whom you call divine masculine, is the one who gives birth. Why did we flip it? Because we wanted, well, on some other planets, it's Beings don't reproduce the way you do. This is how you reproduce on this planet. And, and it's fun. I mean, it's, it's a fun time. Except for the women who die in childbirth. But, well, childbirth itself is not as much fun as it should be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's much easier for God in the etheric. Just like more sparks, more sparks coming out of the light. Or it's for us, we go through the whole... You know, uh, yeah, just like that sound there. <laughs> I feel like I was, uh, what, 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 what is that? You are uh, bleeping out words no one wants to hear. <laughs> so we move on to the more enjoyable subject. 
The divine feminine is about nurturing, and the divine masculine is about safeguarding. When we are in harmony with each other, the divine feminine raise, nurtures from the ground upward, and the divine masculine safeguards from, from the skies down. The rain is the divine masculine. The earth is the divine feminine. They must be in harmony or we do not have plants. Does this make sense? So when you think of the yin and the yang, it is not a man or a woman who must fulfill two roles. It is whomever safeguards works within the energy of what you call the divine masculine and whomever nurtures works within the energy of the divine feminine. There are very few beings who are 100% one or the other. For the most part, you're going to be a combination. Your goal is to become well-balanced, which does not mean androgynous. You can be a perfectly balanced divine masculine and divine feminine and still be physically fully feminine or physically fully masculine. Your sexual identity, your persona, your processing has nothing to do with being balanced. Being balanced, well, that is not quite right. They, they affect each other. But being balanced does not detract from your personality. It just detracts from your um, responses to things that have nothing to do with whom you are. You know, your uh, auto response, your trigger response is impacted. But whenever you sit quietly and you think, what is the best way to handle a situation? And you allow yourself to do so without external factors featuring in, you'll find you naturally find a balanced way to manage. Do you understand this? Yes. yes. Your planet is, of course, very unbalanced right now. And you notice as the frequencies are shifting and changing and people are awakening right and left all around your planet, there are sleeper agents everywhere suddenly going, hey, I'm enlightened. I was a housewife or an architect or a Wall Street dropper, and suddenly I'm awake and enlightened. <laughs> it's such a fun time. Such a fun time. But you'll notice as people are doing that, those who are clinging to the old way are going a little insane. They're going a little extra mad. You, know, you, you look at your political leaders right now. Not just in this country. All over the world, they are either embracing the new frequencies or they're going insane. But what happens when you have a, a dictator who goes insane? The people rise up. So there will be many revolutions around your planet. There already are. There's one in this country right now. We encourage this. The quicker everyone can get to working in a higher frequency, the less trauma you will experience. Does this make sense? Yes. Yeah. Of course it does. Uh, our beloved host has reminded me that we are not introducing ourselves. Up till now, this has, of course, been me, your Divine Mother, speaking. But I am in support with my beautiful sisters, Mary and Mary. They are part of this. Mother Mary wishes to come forward to speak to you about ego. Blessings to you, my beautiful daughter. I feel around this circle 
of just extraordinary souls. And I need to tell you a secret. I already know some of you. Some of you I have worked with in this life. Some of you knew me when I was in life 2,000 years ago. Some of you have worked with me outside of life. I tell you, if you feel a connection with me, accept it, absorb it, honor it within yourself. Feel my love flow into you now. Open your heart. Receive my love. Open them more. For my love is boundless, ever flowing. You know, humility, it's a good thing. But as with anything, too much humility becomes a stumbling block on the path of truth. It is very easy to pick up humility, turn it into blinds, and cover your eyes so that you deny reality. Each and every one of you is an eternal being of divine love of pure light. And yet, on a daily basis, I see you dishonor yourself with criticism, avarice, towards yourself. There is no need to do that. Even at this moment, I hear several of you putting yourselves down for the fact that you put yourselves down. <laughs> This is a pointless exercise and you feel silly. No. When I agreed to come to love, when young Yeshua, of course, before he even was conceived, when he asked my divine partner and myself to be his parents, we were honored. We helped him plan and chart his life. I was excited. I had not incarnated in a long time. When I came to life, I had no memory of whom I was. Imagine that. I, who helped create physical reality, did not know who I was. I was just an ignorant baby. Now, I had given myself many supports in my life. I was raised by an extremely wealthy psychic family. I spent met much time with great teachers. I made sure I had put the soul contract in place that I would become the woman I was meant to be. But, I did not know whom I was until later in life. And even then, it did not come all at once as an epiphany. It came in small moments of increased awareness. You might say my life was me, Mariam. And me, the eternal soul, who slowly came in. By the time I was halfway through my life, I was both me of life and me of eternal life sharing one space. This is an experience that is happening for many of you. Do not shut it down. Accept the increased awareness and understanding as your total soul starts flowing into your body. It would have been too much for you to be born this way. Even I, 
even I, Mother Mary, I love that name, even I, who had agreed to become my student's parent, even I, who have been in life for longer than there has been life, was ignorant of anything other than goo goo ga ga. So, do not doubt yourself. I tell you, you are an eternal being of divine love. Honor this and open up. Why would you do this? The adventures are much more interesting. You can go through life in your little blinded state just going along the path ahead of you, or you can release the blinders and go, oh, wow. You can have more impact. The more you accept the goodness within you, the more you can send goodness out and around you. Do you understand this? Yes. Do you understand it in your heart? Come on, open your heart. Feel the love. Do not make me proselytize to you. I say, Heal yourself. <laughs> Open your heart. Let my love flow in. <laughs> but in reality, think about this. Think about this. You don't know who you are. You may have some specs and thoughts. Why would you not want to get to know yourself? This need of empathic people to self-abuse is ridiculous. Could you imagine if every empathic person on the planet decided only to feel the frequency of love and joy? What would happen? Then send that energy out to everyone. What do you think would happen the mind real that way. I am sending each and every one of you great love at this moment. I am tremendously proud of each of you for being here today, now. You know, there were many who wanted to be here, but just could not, could not honor themselves. At the last moment, they changed their mind. Yet each of you is here with your hearts open. Each of you is here with the courage to be part of the growth of our planet. When your planet lights and becomes one with its place in destiny, wonderful things will happen through all dimensions, all frequencies, and you will be part of it. We will join together now. We are asking Jesus to shift his angels around. Yeah, if you're well supported. When we agree to create physical reality, we went through many experiments. Think about this. There was once a time when physical 
was not even a concept. You think of us as extensions to yourself, from yourself. You, you think, here I am, and from me I connect to all these beings. But understand, you were created from our mind. I mean, of course, you were created from your soul's mind, but your souls were created from, well, from the source's womb. But source created the womb to send out physical light because we created the physical reality. There was a time when entire dimensions would just be one thing. They were all disconnected. Well, it was a mess. You know, a nightmare. But you would go into an entire dimension of reality, and it would be one thing. The dimension of sound. The dimension of yellow. The dimension of upside down. I mean, it was just like these dimensions were all over the place, completely disorganized, disconnected. If you were a being in one dimension, you might not even know how to get out of there to visit someone in another dimension because you didn't know how to get your frequency to their frequency. So we worked very long, and I wouldn't say hard because hard implies difficulty, and it was more just harmonizing. We became um, like symphonic conductors, got everyone into harmony. So that we could visit with each other, we could communicate. The librarians were so helpful with this, as everyone connects through the Akashic Record. We set up sort of um, plateaus where, uh, like no man's land, where anyone could go and meet with others with, and still maintain their frequency. Eventually, communication came, and it was so exciting. If you were the frequency of this one specific note, and someone else is the frequency of this one specific resonance, and you meet with each other, just think. You have literally doubled your understanding of all reality. It was an amazing time. But eventually, we got organized. We got Structured. We all knew how to communicate with each other, and we got bored again. And after a while, you know, you, you can try to mesh two things together, but if they if they're different frequencies, they're not going to mesh. And we thought, how can we mesh? How can we get all resonances into one? So we're not just communicating, but we are living together as one. That's where physical reality came in. That's where you come in. Because everyone helped to create your beautiful planet. You are one of nine planets. That every being, every frequency, every collective, every dimension, every reality came and helped to create. Not just the whole of physical reality, but these nine specific planets that exist in different resonances, there are elements of all dimensions, all beings inside your planet, inside each of you. You can connect with anyone, anything, anywhere, anytime, anyhow, just with the intention and the purity of focus and the faith in self, and the acceptance of what you receive, and uh, awareness that that's what you're doing. So I mean, it gets a little more complicated the more I speak. We, we, we pull back. <laughs> but think about this. You are already connected to everyone, to everywhere. Now it is your time, your turn, your time to sort through all of this and see where all these lines of connections go to when your frequency on this planet becomes high enough your planet will light up and become one with the other nine planets 
And then anyone can travel to anywhere through the energy of these planets. How amazing will that be? Right? Right! You have emissaries of all these places. Everyone who was part of the creation of your planet put their energy, their DNA, their DNA, their their essence, their being into your planet. Your crystals are are um, reactors to this, and the crystals in your body are reactors. We encourage you to explore. We sincerely do. Because Earth is going forward, raising your frequency no matter what. The more humans get on board with this, the easier it will be for you. We, of course, we would like that. You will find on your planet many emissaries People who pretend they're people, but they are actually divine beings in human form. Each and every one of you knows people who are pretending to be people, but they're not. They're living a life as a person. They work, they live, they go out dancing, but they're actually a divine person in masquerade, specifically here to help raise the frequency of the planet. Some of them are beginning to step forward and speak of who they are, but many of them are still remaining undercover, and they will speak up when they're ready. But if you suspect someone of being this way and you ask them, they will answer you honestly. Start asking your friends. Are you human? <laughs> are you an alien in a human body? There are many animals in this way as well. Not just the animal collective, but individual animals. If you say, my cat is an alien in a cat body. <laughs> yeah, possibly. Why is that squirrel always staring at me? <laughs> Ask the squirrel, are you an alien? Mm -hmm. If the squirrel runs away, probably not. If it keeps staring at you, mm -hmm. that's when you really want to work on your telepathic and animal communication skills. Uh, you'd be amazed how many animals will come forward once they know you can speak their language. Yeah, because they're not going to speak with like just an ignorant human asking questions. Mm -hmm. But if you telepathically ask them, they'll answer. They might say, no, but my buddy Charlie is. <laughs> the rise of the divine feminine. It's painful. There's so much anger among women, understandably. Each and every one of you has experienced sexism in your life. Each of you has been denied jobs, held back from promotions, underpaid, belittled, demeaned, being told you can't get the girl. You have all been put down. And when women try to rise up, then women as a whole are put down. Women say, we have the hashtag Me Too movement. And then men say, oh, we're going to make abortion illegal. Of course, it is a battle right now. But the only way to win the battle is to stand strong and be truthful through love. If you feel fear or if you feel anger, then they're winning, those who are trying to keep the women down. That does not mean you may not feel fear or you may not feel anger. We're saying do not live in fear and anger. The bride Mary. 
wishes to come forward. When my husband and I talked, we spoke of the importance of honoring every experience that occurred within your heart, your soul, your mind, and learning from it. If you feel anything below the frequency of love, this is a lesson. This is a moment to stop honor what you're feeling and learn from it so you can grow as a person. I encourage you, do not deny your feelings, do not repress your feelings, do not abuse yourself for having feelings. In my time, women were told that we could not learn to read and write. We could not learn anything scholarly. We could not even walk through the streets by ourselves unless we were peasants and asking to be raped. It was a very difficult time, and yet what has changed? Certainly not enough to merit 2,000 years. It's ridiculous. And you see, I feel frustration. I honor myself for the frustration. And then I say, what lessons do I have to learn? So that I can go from frustration to self-empowered love. The lessons for me are mine to learn for myself. I have yet to learn patience. That may take another millennium or 12. I, I, you know the phrase. Do not suffer fools. Well, I would rather suffer fools than bullies. I have always been one to stand up to a bully. My husband taught me well on this lesson. This is what I wish to share with you, because each of you are up against bullies. Bullying comes from fear of self. When a person is feeling um, comfortable with themselves, they do not feel the need to bully others. Those who bully others, those who micromanage others, are doing so because they do not have faith in self. Here's the kicker. Is it your job to teach them to have faith in self? Is it your job to help them with their life lessons? No. It's not. It's their job to learn their life lesson. It may be a life lesson that will take them 10, 12, 20 lives to learn. Or they may learn it in the next hour. It is your job to honor yourself. As the wonderful Taoists say, if you are lying in a meadow next to your favorite water buffalo, and you are contemplating the great nothingness in the sky. And then a war breaks out around you in this meadow. You do not fight this war that has nothing to do with you. You get up and you ride your water buffalo to another meadow, lie down, and contemplate the great nothingness in the sky. Let those people risk their own battles. Now, of course, if you have the ability to stand up, and say, my brothers and sisters, why are you fighting? Embrace each other in love, and they will hear you. Then that would be a good thing. That would be a blessing. And you would be helpful to them. But if you stand up and you say, my brothers and sisters, oh, a spear to your throat. Then hop on your water buffalo and ride away. Choose your battle wisely. But here is the biggest lesson. If you and your water buffalo have gone to another meadow and you lie down, kick back and say, I am ready to contemplate the great nothingness. Look at the beautiful sky. 
But all you're thinking is, they stole my meadow. They kicked me out of my rightful meadow. And now I'm stuck here in this other beautiful meadow. <laughs> if you are in your heart saying, I was happy. And then they came and brought disharmony to me. And they made me feel worthless. Then you have not left that meadow. You are still there. You must allow them to fight their battles while you choose your life. Do not self-recriminate because you have learned a lesson and moved forward. You cannot drag all the warriors forcibly to peace, but you can send love to the planet. Here is a lesson that our hostess has taught to me. I do like things now. You are walking on a street, and there's a cliff on one side and going down, and a cliff on the other side going up, and you're walking on this mountain path. And you hear someone say, help, help. So you look over the cliff and you see someone hanging there. Help, please help me up. So what are your choices? You can ignore the person and keep walking. Or you can reach your hand down and try to help them up. Or you can say, oh, well, I'll go get help and send help for you. Hang on. <laughs> I think everyone in this room would reach down your hand to help the person up. At this point, it is they who have the choice to make. They can either say, I can't find your hand. I'm just going to stay here and stop help. Stop putting your hand in my face. I'm here to help. Or they may take your hand and with your help get up on the cliff, off the cliff to the street, and the two of you may walk together a ways, or they may say thank you and walk another ways. Or they might punch you in the face and kick you off the cliff. Or, as they reach and grab your hand, they may yank you down the cliff. And then they want you there beside them, going, help, help. The choice at that point is theirs, because you, by taking your action, have given them the appropriate power to choose their action. If they get up off the cliff, then karmically it's very comfortable. The two of you chat, they thank you. You go your ways together, separate. If they pull you down the cliff and you're still holding your hand, it is your job to let go of their hand and climb your way back up off the cliff. Even as they're screaming, what are you doing? You're leaving me behind. I thought we we're in this together. Help, help, come back and get me. Don't leave me behind. You must leave them behind. Because it is their choice to be hanging off the cliff. If you were able to pull yourself up off the cliff, they were able to pull themselves off the cliff. They chose to be hanging there. There is a difference between needing help and refusing to go forward with love. When someone genuinely needs help and you feel you can help them, if you offer the help and they accept your help, then that is a good karmic decision on everyone's part. If someone is asking for help and you choose to help them but it's not helping them, you are not helping them. Do you understand that? Because you are each humble people, I think each of you has tried to help the same person more than one time. And then sometimes they get angry at you, saying you're the reason they're hanging off the cliff. You must honor yourself. You must honor your process. Whatever you are feeling, honor it. And learn from it. Every emotion creates energy. When something happens to me and I feel anger, and believe me, I am quick to anger, just ask my husband. It's a good thing he's such a calm being. 
I mean, stars going supernova will cower compared to my flares of anger. But I have created a great deal of energy. And as my temper flares up, I go, oh, look at that. Something has triggered me. That's interesting. Well, I honor the fact that this has angered me. But why am I angry by this? What is happening within me that makes me react in this way? And is there anything I can do about it? If there's something I can do, I do. If there's nothing I can do, then I just say, well, now I have all this good energy. Let's gobble it up and put it somewhere useful and fill myself with love. Honor your emotions because they are honest. They are your most honest response. Your emotions come before your thoughts, like lightning before thunder. Your thoughts in your head are the slow rumbling thunder off in the distance, but your emotions are that brilliant flash of light that comes from the heavens, that goes all the way down to the earth or all the way through the sky. Honor your emotions. They will always tell you what is happening within your being and let you know what lesson you are in process with. If you ignore or repress your emotions, then you are not completing your lessons. Do you really want to die with all these lessons incomplete? No. You want to complete them while you are in light so that you can be happier and have an easier life. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, why do we mention this? Because the rise of the frequency now, the rise of the divine feminine, it will not come easily. There are those who do not, they're terrified of us. They're like, oh, when women are in power, what will happen to us? The men are saying, will they castrate all of us? It can be tempting, but no. <laughs> Because the rise of the divine feminine is about everyone being equal. Each of you has had the experience where when you are in a difficult time in life, you may have some friend who comes forward and they're helpful to you. And uh, maybe you have much in common. You are suffering a loss, they suffered a loss, so you, you are there to support each other. And as you say, okay, I'm feeling better now. I'm ready to now go on to the next stage of life. They become upset with you, angry with you, because they want you to stay there with them, because they do not want to grow. Or maybe they're not quite ready to grow, but if they're honestly in their space where they're not ready to grow, they will still be happy for you, for your growth. But if they're afraid of growth, they will try to keep you down. That is what is happening on your planet now. There is so much fear of what will happen when women have their own place of right. The only thing you can do is keep going forward. Keep going forward and fill your heart with joy. Be proud of who you are and send that love out. Find activities that benefit your planet, that bring you joy as well. It may be feeding the homeless. It may be helping stray animals. It may be uh, tutoring a special needs child. It may be uh, um, you know, putting a bird feeder on your porch. It, it could be whatever brings you joy that benefits your planet no matter how big or small. Everything you do will create energy, and that energy will go out, rolling out, rolling out. Think of something you love to do. Now, it's either something that obviously benefits the planet or it's something you love to do that benefits no one but yourself. Both are equally valid. 
Now think about the thing you love to do and imagine sharing it with someone you love to do things with. How lovely is that? The best way you can help our planet is to fill your life with things you love to do and to fill yourself with love. Honor yourself. You may feel like that's selfish, but it's not. Because whom do you turn to when you need support, help, and advice? You turn to those who honor themselves. If you honor yourself, believe me, those who need guidance or help or love or friendship will find you. You will be amazed how just by being yourself you will inspire others. Then if you wish to do more, go forward and do more. Just do not berate yourself for doing even more than that. Do what works for your soul. Honor yourself and you will find your abilities will grow and grow. And your experiences will become more fulfilling and more impactful. Does anyone have questions? No questions. Are we boring you? <laughs> okay. I have a question. What does it mean embrace the multiplicity of femininity? Mm. The multiplicity of femininity. I invite each of you We invite each of you to think of yourself as a beautiful prism, multifaceted, with light reflecting on you, beautiful colors and rainbows emanating, dancing through the air all around you. Invite that prism to exist in multiple timelines all at once. So you will see prisms spread, possibly floating all around, each reflecting light upon each other, each one of slightly different materials, different cuts, invite this multi-timeline prism to exist in multiple dimensions at once. Give your mind a moment and your heart to feel a multi-dimensional, multi-timeline, light-reflecting series of multi-faceted prisms, all existing together. Invite these prisms into your body and feel them in each chakra, your crown, 
third eye on down. Give yourself a moment to let this multi-time, multi-dimensional, multi-faceted crystal to emanate with each of your energy centers in your body and how that would emanate out of you and around you through other prisms that are floating around you through time, space, dimension, and frequency. Invite all of these prisms into your heart. Fill them with the most nurturing love. And then send them outward like a love firework exploding off into all directions, filling the planet with your love, multidimensional prism of time and space and love. Each of you is existing in multiple timelines at this moment. Each of you connects with multiple frequencies. And each of you has lived multiple lives. As you nurture this divine state of being, Give it permission to grow, evolve, fill outward. You naturally connect your purest, most divine essence. to every possible state of being, all at once. Allow your heart to open You'll even see the beautiful prism that is still in there, sending all the light outward. Let your heart open and connect with all the other wonderful, open-hearted women here in this circle, inviting their prism hearts refract into yours as yours grows outward then. You can feel as the energy is flowing around the circle, it is also refracting across circle and in many directions as though we are even creating with all the energy going in every direction refracting from each of your heart prisms to everyone's heart prism so much light flowing in all directions 
naturally in the center of our circle, a light prism is created. Each of us are the facet of it. Invite the light prism to grow. And you can feel the divine love flowing into your being. All the prisms that have been appearing everywhere and all the love in your heart flowing through, the divine love coming in and flowing through, sparkling the prisms with light reflection everywhere, creating this beautiful prism that surrounds us all. We are the element within our own prism of love and connection. You may keep your hearts open. And allow this prism to just do its thing as we return our consciousness to the group. I answer the multiplicity of divine feminine is the ability to create divine love in all directions. When you feel you are alone in this life, call the other aspects of yourself. It may be you in the other timelines. It may be you in other frequencies. It may be your higher self. It may be the energy of you that is expanded around you. It may be the energy of you that is flowing above and below you. Call this into you and send it outward. As you go forward with each step, this energy surrounds you and connects all of your energetic beings of self. This is so much more powerful than anything that any negative being can bring against you. The flow of love always comes to self first and then goes out. But the more you allow it to expand within self, the more powerful it will be when it goes out. Um, where, where does the love originate? Is it then any person or is it the vagina or source? Where? My question. Probably everywhere, but. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite question, Gaia here. Do you know love was the first thing? The second thing, the first thing was a loud noise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we love divine timing of the hall. <laughs> Once there was nothing. And then there was a sound. At that moment, your divine father and I were both created. Our backs were to each other. And we both existed 
staring into nothingness with no senses. And then we turn our awareness of each other occurs. Instantly there was love. And from that love, all of reality was created. All beings, the angels were the first. All beings of the non-physical were created from our first moments of love. I can tell you love at first sight is real. Where does love come from? For us, it came from awareness of each other. Your divine father, when he creates life, it is created from his love, which he expresses as pure light. For me, I create love as energy that starts in the heart and then flows through the being. You can love without anyone ever in your life. You can exist your entire life all alone and still be filled with love every moment of every day. But yes, if you wish to be loved, love yourself. If you wish for more love in your life, love yourself to the amount that you deserve and more. For you, you deserve infinite love. If you go through life saying, I can only be loved if someone outside of me loves me, Otherwise, I do not deserve love. Then you are denying yourself. If you go through life saying, I love myself, and I allow love to flow through me and outward, you are providing for self. If you go through life saying, I do not deserve love, then those who will never love you will be drawn to you. And if you go through life saying, I am love, then those who are of love will be drawn to you. Love yourself first and foremost. For when you do, you are honoring the first spark of creation, the first act of two beings having awareness of each other. You honor us and all creation in reality when you love yourself. Does this answer your question? I will say there are mandalas of love all around your planet that you can connect with. They are wonderful. I encourage you to do that as well. Love does not always need to come from self. Find pools of love, spaces of love, beings of love. And when you are filled with love of self and you connect with these, it is wonderful. Yes, be the change you wish to see around you. Yes. Um, there's so many things. Even the small things matter. But certainly, manifestation is about seeming prayers and action. If you sit at home watching television and wishing for a better planet, you're not really doing much to make it happen. 
you must take action. That action can be showing support for others, or that action can be uh, contributing yourself. You may choose to run for an office. You may choose to um, be a, a teacher or a healer. You can take any action you wish, but understand if the action does not fill the hunger in you to be part of the change, you need a greater action. The action must meet the hunger, the prayer, the desire, because you have soul contracted to come to this planet to affect the change. If you say, I'm coming to Earth to affect a change, and you have a desire to have a big effect, but your action is a small action, you will feel unfulfilled and you will karmically harm yourself. I tell you, however big the action is that you crave to be, be it. But find what action calls to your heart. If Sitting in political meetings makes you want to shoot yourself. Do not become a politician. <laughs> if cleaning animal feces is disgusting to you, do not work with rescue animals. Do you understand that? Find you already contracted what work you wish to do. And that work is in your heart calling out. This is why we say, listen to your heart. If your heart is saying, I am meant to be a great performer. Oh, who am I to think I'm meant to be a performer? Oh, and you shut yourself down. You are denying the sole purpose, you, not sole purpose, I must say, a major purpose of why you are here on this planet. Do you think any of the great leaders who truly affected change did not struggle with this. There are some who are somewhat arrogant, but their change was not planetary healing. If their change was planetary healing, they struggle. If you are struggling, then you're on the right path. Go forward, but out of the struggle to the action. So how can you affect change? Encourage your youth to vote. No matter whom they vote for, encourage them to vote. In this country, encourage everyone to vote. Now, if you do not like calling people or going door to door, asking people to vote, then that's not how you do it. But encourage everyone to vote. Encourage your older friends to have faith in the youth. Support the youth. Look in your heart as to what it is that will bring you the most joy. Start there. And then say, how can I use this joyous activity to help others? move on to them. If you love needlework, if you love sewing, then do some sewing and perhaps go to a homeless shelter and say, can I teach young girls how to sew? Or young people, forgive us. We forget that the male exists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Find a way to share your love. Do not force yourself to do healing through things you dislike doing. Mm. We ask you, whom I had asked us this question, what do you love to do? I love to 
That is wonderful. That is wonderful. Healing is a wonderful thing. You teach healing. Then you are doing your part, and we thank you and honor you. If you wish to do more, we are asking your guys. <laughs> If they say they send inspiration to you, and um, they say when you ask for inspiration, here's what they want you to work on. You open up so much that you receive too much inspiration. It is overwhelming. <laughs> and you want to do 10 things at once. <laughs> You are very uh, open and connected. So they're saying, slow down a little and pick one thing or two things. Or um, hmm. look at the linear passage of your work. Don't spread out so broad because you are not building a city. <laughs> they're saying, think about what you're doing and how do you take it to your next level next level. And you can do that with several things. But a little more going forward and a little less how many more people can you bring into this? Does, does this make sense to you? Yeah. Uh, you you you're good. <laughs> the um The power of the female is truly about nurturing. The problem with nurturing is you have no control over what it will grow into. All you can do is keep nurturing and sending nourishment to whatever it is that's growing. Understand. You may think this is a beautiful garden, but here's a weed. But who knows, that weed may become the leader of society. Nurture the weed. You call it a weed. We call it life. You understand war is in many ways really about the oppression of the female. Women give birth. They raise beautiful children. And then the divine masculine says, we're old and in power. We feel threatened by all these strong young men. So we're going to make a war and kill them so they cannot threaten our power. We only want to handpick those who will be in power. So the women create all the beautiful life. And then the men, not all men, not all men, but often those in power want to murder all of those, that they are never challenged in their power. This is happening again. This never stops happening. But, no, it does stop happening. It will stop happening. This only started when the men fell out of, of uh, connection with nature. The men fell first out of connection. By becoming dominant, disrespecting the power of the planet. They stopped listening to the animals. They stopped dreamwalking. They stopped using their natural energetic skills. They stopped, you know, astral projecting. They stopped listening to their guides. The men stopped doing this first. Then they felt the need to oppress and harm women because we had not stopped doing this. This has been an endless cycle. Oh, no, about to end. Mm -hmm. This has been an unfortunate cycle for a very long time. As the divine feminine rises up and says, enough. We are not just going forward with the frequency of our planet. We are returning to how we were, how all humans were 
when we were in harmony with all. It is a remembering, a returning, as well as a growth. Just as each of you, when you learn something that you think is new, but once you learn it, you realize, I have always known this. Your planet will have the same educational process. What can each of you do at this moment be in constant contact with your politicians, letting them know what you want of them. The more people who speak up, the harder it is for them to vote against the consciousness of their of their uh, those who elected them. All right, what else can you do? Start with your local community and reach out. Reach out further. If you have extra money, contribute money to um, organizations that you wish to support. If you have extra time, contribute your time to people or places or organizations you wish to support. Volunteering is a wonderful way of helping. You might help at your local park. Or you might help out at a senior center. Travel. Be outspoken. Do not swallow your words. Do not be afraid to express your truth. Every act in your life that has allowed you to be repressed, when you open your mouth and speak, others will say, this happened to me too. I thank you for your honesty. Do you know one guard can keep a hundred people down if those people are afraid to look around or speak up? When you speak up, you change the dynamic from one person repressed to part of a connection of people who are standing up all around. When you speak your heart, it may be about love. It may be about compassion. It may be about past horrors that existed before this moment. It may be about anything. We tell you, share your truth. We also say, prepare yourselves because this is planet is only going kicking and screaming into its new age of existence. So prepare yourselves to uh, be self-sufficient no matter what comes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Start looking at your planet, not just from where you are as a physical human being connected with all the trauma that's happening on the physical planet. Let your consciousness also go above to the global mandala. Come up and join us from our perspective, looking down on the planet and see all the collectives that are connected to your planet. If you wish to really impact healing on your planet, spend less time being frustrated and small and more time being cosmically connected and aware. When you look upon your planet and you see
seeing the polar bear collective. Because certainly you are not the only ones who incarnate. All beings incarnate. Get to know all the other animals from their collective level, from their higher selves, their incarnated selves. For certainly a little of support on that level has a huge effect on the physical planet level. See things from the higher perspective. Everything is easier to handle, to fix, repair, when you get out of the victimized, caught in the moment perspective, and you go up to the higher perspective. It will also be an interesting exercise for each of you to grow your skills. How do you do this? Each of you are connected to your higher self. Your higher selves have a global perspective. Go up and join your higher self. This will be a good exercise for you to learn to connect with your higher self and get out of your head, so to speak. As you join with your higher self, Connect with your soul family, your guides, your guardians, your mentors, and ask them to help train you, to teach you how to see what's happening on our planet from a more cosmic interdimensional platform. When you see how the increased frequency of our planet will send a trigger to eight other planets in other dimensions, galaxies, universes, and how this will help pull all of physical and non-physical reality together. It's a very big thing. It's interesting. Any more questions for Bella? Yes. In reference to the experience of the black bear, the melding of the energy. Hmm. There is tremendous power there. Embrace the power in you. Embrace it and let it flow and grow outward. You have the ability to be a great healer and a great destroyer. But you understand Destruction is the first stage of creation. Who here has manifested? Everyone! <laughs> the first stage of manifestation is to release what within you is blocking the connection between you and what you desire. When you say, I wish to manifest blank. The first thing you'll be aware of is what you are lacking in self or what you are harboring in self or what within self must leave. Only then can you go forward to claim that which you crave, desire, that which resonates with you. You remove the non-resonating energy to become one with the resonating energy. Black Bear's greatest power is that. So Black Bear's magic feels terrifying because it is either that of a nurturing mother with cubs who will be ferocious to any who come near, or it is terrifying because it seems to attack and claw inside of you. But what is it doing? The claws come in and take out that which does not serve. 
so it can then guide you to that which you need. Black bear is specifically the most loving and nurturing of all the bear energies. Black bears have humor. They have great nurturing love within them. Black bear would always, always rather be caring than hostile. But black bear is no fool. And black bear is very protective. You must dream of black bear. You must, because black bear speaks with you every night. Physical black bears cross your path. The more you are in resonance with this as your totem, the less you will fear them eating you in the wild. But do not go up and embrace a black bear in the wild. <laughs> Self love is the greatest power women have. And at the moment, this is why the obviously not all men but the men who live in fear are trying to harm the self-love in women. When you love yourself, it means you accept yourself for whom you are. It means that you embrace all that is within you. This is terrifying for those who live in fear and anger, pretension, because what can they do against that? So yes, self-love means you look in yourself and say, I'm quirky, I'm an unbalanced human being who sometimes says the wrong thing and sometimes I'm selfish. And that's okay. I love myself. I am okay and I'm all right. To men, not all men, the men that I mentioned, to these men, there is nothing more terrifying than a woman who loves herself. So they will do everything they can to tear this down. They will say, we don't want you to be paid well. We don't want you to have abortions. We don't want you to get a good education. We, don't, we do want you to have many children, and then we will deny you welfare. This is what they want. Yes. What I say to you, do not tell yourself, I will love myself when I deserve it. Do tell yourself, I deserve 100% love, and I give myself 100% love. I forgive myself everything I have done in my life, because carrying around the guilt and the shame does me no good. You may learn lessons in order to release, but release, release everything old. If you are embarrassed because you said the wrong thing at a dinner party, and three years later you are carrying this embarrassment, drop it. <laughs> the only reason you said a wrong thing at the dinner party is because others did not receive what you said as right for their ears. 
and they were too rude to calm you and say, oh, whatever. So give it back to them. And they won't even notice it. <laughs> but self-love is your greatest tool, your greatest asset. It is not truly a weapon, except by those who do not have love in them. When you go forward filled with love of self, there are those who will feel very threatened, and they will try to tear you down. You know, it is unfortunate that there are men and women who act this way. That is their path for them to live. It does not mean you need to deflate or feel less than love of self. There are those you will see in the most unfortunate circumstances, and yet they feel blessings every day because they have self-love. You cannot always control your surroundings, but you can certainly open up and fill yourself with love. When you fill yourself with love and you feel little pockets, little marks of non-love, like little bruises on a fruit, then you can target those individual areas Talk with them. Who are you? Why are you here? Why do I have this wound within me? And they will tell you their story. Then you may love them and release them. If you find you are surrounded by those who wish to tear you down just because you dare love yourself, think about this. Do you wish to then put yourself in an environment where you're surrounded by those who support you with love? Or do you wish to use this power that they're afraid of as a tool to help you achieve your goals? There's no right answer for this. It's what is right for you in the moment. Martin Luther King Jr constantly surrounded by those who did not love him. And yet he used all that energy to fuel his love and go forward. This is an example of how you can be a truly flawed human being and yet love yourself and go forward sending the love outward no matter how it is received. He could have detached himself from the angry mom and gone to live in a monastery. He could have done that. He chose to stay among those who hated him and send love outward. So, unfortunately, of course, he was taken from his life before his time. Because you cannot control how others will react. But look at the impact he had in the time he had and the ripple effects that continued. He created a great mandala. There was another question. Children? What about children? Oh, yes, yes. Soon, all the children born on this planet will be enlightened children. Just love them, love them, and watch as they light the planet up. This is, it's happening. It's happening. You are seeing them. More and more children coming to this planet who are either ancient souls or not of the human race. Yes. Yes. Mm.
what are the traits that accompany us when we age these declining years? There's possible fear of death, remorse of life not fully lived, less energy to accomplish, you know, there's less energy for each day. There's less ability to manage life. And there is um, less ability to coordinate what they desire. Help your elders by taking care of their mundane tasks. Help them by asking what adventures they would like to have and arranging to enjoy those adventures with them. If they have pain, listen to their pain. If they have stories, listen to their stories. It is tragic that we push our elders out of society. That is not how you were meant to live. You were meant to live in small communities with all ages together as one where everyone is helpful within their community. As your role shifts through the years, you still have a role. Bring back your elders for their role. Remind them that they are of value. Ask them about stories of their childhood, and they'll say, oh, I don't remember. It was so long ago. And say, you once told me about. Or... What? Tell me about your high school. Tell me about this. Tell me about that. Give them something to talk about. If your 97-year-old grandparent wishes to go on a rafting trip, take them on a rafting trip. And if they wish to go for a bicycle ride, get one of those bicycle things for children and settle them. If they wish to go to the symphony, take them to the symphony. And if they fall asleep in the symphony, then know they're having a wonderful rest. <laughs> Provide for their needs so that the energy they have can be put to what they desire, not the mundane. Honor them with your love and let them know they are valued. that they still have purpose. Any questions where we're beginning to fall out of space here? Are there are any any further questions? We thank you. We honor and bless you. We ask each of you when you sleep tonight, invite us and your guides, your guardians, your angels to join you. Tonight, tomorrow night, any night. But tonight will be especially a powerful connection and opening. Thank you. We share our blessings to you all. Well, bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh.